I don't play anything fancy because I don't know anything fancy. I, I play pretty basic, uh, pretty basic stuff. I'm not, Chris Thiele is not worried at all about me taking over his, uh, <laughs> his spot or Jake Jolliffe or any of those guys. I, who doesn't got one of these? Can I have one? I think I've already lost mine, Sandy. It's a... What is it? We have eval applied. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Eval, me great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Anybody else? Who else needs one? Yeah. I, didn't get, I didn't get one. Are we supposed to do one? I can also have a one. When I first started playing mandolin, I got pushed into a band situation right away. And so I, I, I had to figure out, and they were playing stuff in B, B flat, E flat, F sharp. And I said, I know G, C, and D. Great. But um, and you can't use a capo on a mandolin. Although there are some guys using capos now and getting away with it. But um, they, you get heckled horribly if you, you put, pull out a capo. What is it? And and I, I could see uses for it. Like if I wanted to play in B flat, but I wanted some open strings ringing, I might use a capo. I haven't yet, but I I I I, I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't make fun of you if you did use a capo. Um, but there are people who will. And uh, but anyhow, what I did is I made drawings of the fingerboard, hundreds of them. And I wrote down it where every note was. And I, to play in B, I went through and I circled every double stop. Does everybody know what a double stop is? That's part of a chord. A chord is made up of three notes, so one, three, five. And I circled every double stop that was a B. And then I said, well, a four chord in, uh, in B is, is F sharp, or is E. So I said, well, I'll, I'll find every E double stop. And then I'm going to find every F sharp double stop. And I started plotting them out, and I started to notice that it makes a pattern. And it's always the same pattern. It's repeatable over and over. And I said, well, I don't need to know what all those notes are. All I need to know is this pattern. And that's where I decided that, that this thing called the blue, bluegrass box. It's a box that has this pattern in it. And This is it, right here. This is the bluegrass box. Looking at the mandolin neck like you were holding it straight up, strings one, two, three, and four, and the frets down. This is the bluegrass box in B. Oh. I'm gonna put it up here. I didn't put them all up to start with because I don't want anybody going, getting ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Put that off to the side. Okay, that's, when you look at this note right here, that's the, I should have put a star on that. Matter of fact, I think I might do that. Because that's the magic, that's where you're, that, that, that's where you start. When I start there, I have a bluegrass box here. This, this, this pattern, and uh, it's movable to anywhere I put this finger. If I move my finger down here to D, then I, in the bluegrass box, I can move the whole thing down, and it's in D. But right now, we're going to concentrate on B, because B is the one that got me when I first started. I said, how do I play in B? I, I have no idea what to do in B. And so I had to, I, I struggled with it some. And, uh, and if you play this as a scale, starting with F sharp, with, with this note right here, you can... Now that's not your regular Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti scale. That's, that's a... And I found out that I can, fi I can find melodies for breaks in those notes without any other notes. Now, is that the only thing possible? No, there's lots of other notes possible. But to simplify it, I can take a break on just about any song in B with just those notes and make it sound like music. And, and that's my goal. I want it to sound like the song. I don't want it to sound like a bunch of abstract notes. I don't like, um, I hate hearing a break on anything that I can't figure out what it is. I think you should know, you should 
if you can't come into the middle of somebody's break and say, oh, he's playing Bury Me Beneath the Willows, then, then I don't think it's a good break. I mean, it, it's not a break that makes sense to me. Now, that's probably because I can't do it. Maybe if I could do it, then I'd say, oh, this is the way. Let's, let's play this jazzy stuff all the time. But since I can't, I choose not to like it. So you can, you can decide to like it or not. When I listen to some of these progressive new, new age players, I don't even know what they're playing. It's like not even, it's, it's like listen, you know, listening to a really nice, really good speech in Chinese. It may be great, but I don't understand it. Um, Frank, Frank Ray of Cedar Hill said the same thing. Yeah. Same thing. So let's, so my idea, if, if, um, so if you doodle around with just this, just this pattern, and you can, you can probably find more melody lines in there than you think, than you, you think, then you'll, you'll be amazed that if, if you're going to play like Bury Me Beneath the Willow. sounded like something to me mm -hmm. it sounded like the song it's not fancy um, but it, but it's all in just these notes just that you know there's eight notes there um, pr pretty simple but I'm not going to teach you that specifically yes so the root note would be the second string the second fret Yep. In, in this pattern, it's right here. It's not always second string, second fret. It's well, just, yeah. if you set this pattern down, that's the root note right there. Isn't that also, that's the B note? Because that's it's the B. B note. Yeah. It is the B, yeah. Okay. But right now we're playing in B. But this is transferable to anywhere on these two middle strings. If, wherever you put this, if I put it down here at G, I can play this in G. I can play the, the, the bluegrass pattern here. In, in B, I can play it in E flat, and once you start messing with this and moving it around, you'll find out how it, that it really is simple. It, it's not rocket science. It doesn't require a whole lot of brain power to figure this out, and because uh, I did it, and uh, but uh, you can move it around anywhere. Now I base a lot of my work out of double stops. I'll do little pieces of chords that, that, I'd move, that I move around. And within this pattern here, you have a one, four, five, actually you have two ones, a four, and a five chord. <clears throat> so, um, got this all in a handout, like I said, I'm gonna, I'll give it to you when we're done, but I, I don't want to give it to you now because everybody will be looking down at the handout. Okay, in this pattern, the B and the F sharp make um, part of a B chord, that's the double stop, so that's the one chord. And also, the F sharp and the E flat are part. The, 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 the chord for a B is, the one is B, C sharp, and F sharp. That's the, that's the chord, so that's the arpeggio. Oh, that's C sharp, D sharp. D sharp. Pardon? Like C sharp. So e, I'm sorry, E flat. Yeah. E flat. My, my brain, see, I don't use my brain. <laughs> but, but see, it, the way I think of this, I don't think of this as the notes, I think of it as the pattern. Uh, because I, I, if I move this to somewhere else, that, that's, that's, it's, still this, it's still the same pattern. So the arpeggio is B, E flat, F sharp. And you can go up to this B too if you want. And I don't include that in the bluegrass box. 
sometimes I do when I'm playing, but uh, you'll add that extra B high. But for the most part, I don't. I, I keep it simple. I, I, um, so if you're playing a one chord, you can play this, the, the, this one right here. That's a one chord. And then this is a one chord. So I'm going to go bury me beneath the willows. chords but this is the easy one so if I use the, the B and the F sharp we're, we're basically playing a uh, I mean a, a, a G sharp this is an e. e E arpeggio is E G sharp and B so for a for a four chord we got special a million times, but what they play for the E is this double stop, the, the B and the G sharp. So they'll, when they're doing a, they, they, that, that's what the fiddle player's playing on, on uh, when he's vamping on that E on Orange Blossom Special. They'll, they'll use that, this E. This one doesn't seem to fit what I play too much, but it's there. It's a it's a four chord if you want it if you want that. And and like I say, these are all patterns. The notes the notes don't mean anything to me right now. It, it's just it, it's this pattern that, because I'm going to move this all over the place. <laughs> so it's not a. Uh, are not significant other than just to tell to show you that these are all in the in the arpeggio you know arpeggio is the chord outline of the chord it's the one three five one of the chord like if you're in B and that's a repeatable pattern anywhere you go on the mandolin that, that's that's a so um, makes life makes life really easy the mandolin is so it's so easy in that compared to the guitar or the banjo or things that have the B string in it that ruins everything. <laughs> I, I, I do play the guitar too and, and, and for that I just have to memorize what I'm doing. For mandolin I can sort of make it up in my head. So I like the mandolin better than the guitar because the guitar you have to actually use your brain. And, uh, and I'm finding that the older I get the less I have. So I need to, I need to not, um, well, trust me, trust me, it's true. So I notice but you don't use your pinky, pinky fingers, oh, I do. your hands are bigger. I do, I use my pinky a lot, but not in this. Oh, okay. I use my pinky a lot. Because um, I can't seem to reach it for the way you're doing it there. What's that, the... That's, that's okay. 
Okay. But my, my suggestion, and this is for log from great experience with teaching folks to say they can't do it, that if you can do it, you just got to stretch it and make it work on it for two weeks and I'll, I'll bet you can reach it. Just, if you have to just take your finger and pull it down there and hold it yeah. for two, hold it for 10 seconds and then keep doing that. And because uh, one of my students was had arthritis in her hands and she said she couldn't do it. And I said, I'll bet you can. Hmm. And after a month, she could. Oh. And yeah. as a matter of fact, she was almost ready to fight me over it. <laughs> she, she, she thought I was being mean to her when I said, oh, you can do it. You just got to work at it. She said, well, I'm not lazy. I can work at it. And I said, yeah, but you got to know that you can do it. Yeah, and, and I know you can do it. So she did. Yeah, you just got to make it do it. Stretch it. And you'll, you'll, you'll be able to do it. I, I just bet you. Okay, to finish this off, we have to add a five chord. And <coughs> and this is the five chord I use mostly. It's, it, it's F sharp, C sharp, or this F sharp, or no, yeah, you can use this F sharp too, but I don't, that doesn't fit with what I do mostly, so mostly I just use this one. So if you're going to play this song with just these four chords, with the one, there, there may be four willows, one, There's 25 mandolins in a, in a works in a thing, and they're all going. so you can just just play the double stops. And I do this all the time if there's if it's a big jam and it's overpowering. I'll just I'll just play this instead of big chop chords and making you know adding to the noise. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't need to add to the noise. I mean, you know, jams is what I, I do more jams than playing on stage anymore. And I try to add to the jam rather than rather than, than, than overpower it or I don't want to I don't need to be the loudest guy there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if somebody's being really loud, you can be quiet next to them and, and just kind of look at them <laughs> with a guilty <laughs> give them the guilty mom look and, and you can make them back off. Or if somebody's just being a jerk in a jam, I don't have a problem saying, you know, you really need to back off. Please, politely. We're not, we're not out here to make people mad or hurt anybody's feelings, but if somebody's being too loud, sometimes they don't know it. Um, one thing that I teach in my lessons is that when you practice, practice loud. Go if, you, if you're bothering everybody in the house, go find a quiet place, because you can't play loud if you don't practice loud. If you're playing in a jam and you want to be heard for a break, if you're, if you're playing... can and if you need to play loud you can't do it if you've been only practicing quietly and because it's easy to back off and play quiet if you need to but it's not easy to learn to play loud and I know that beginners even some intermediate players they'll, they'll sit and practice on their counts do but the problem is that doesn't you don't get the tone these are all nice instruments and you don't you know they don't sound good unless you make the wood vibrate. Mm -hmm. So you, you gotta make them. You gotta make the wood. These are little air pumps. This wood has to move, and it, it pumps out the sound. And if you play quietly, all you're getting is the string vibration. And you
might as well just go buy a rig to crappy members in because that's that's what you've got. That's effectively what you've got when you're playing soft because you're not moving wood. You're not, you know, there's a lot of money put into all these all, all these things and building these things. And so my my suggestion is to use it. And going back to what I talked to you before about being too loud, when you're playing chords and just beating the heck out of it, you don't need to, you know, you sometimes need to back off. But even if I'm playing just this, I'll play it. I'll hit it hard enough that you that it makes the makes the wood vibrate. There, there's two arpeggios. There, there, there's one that start like on a G. Say if you're playing a, the middle G chord, G and B. There's this pattern. This pattern. Is, there, there's only two closed arpeggio patterns. Is this one? And then there's one if you start. You can do the same one, same notes. If you move down, get the G with your first finger. You'll do this pattern right here, 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 and here, but you're doing it with the G. You're going to move down to this G right here, to this G, and you're going to... Same notes, except they're down... But that, that's, the, that's the two main ar arpeggio patterns that we have on the mandolin. say I'm not caring about notes I'm caring about positions so it's it's, it's a relative position because we're you know um, so let's do this let's play well, let's pick a different song this this one four five anybody got an idea Donna what song would you sing yeah what would you sing Dave <coughs> Okay. In what key? Yeah, We're well gonna do it in B. Okay, let's do it in B. Okay, we're gonna start off in, with the one with this one, this one right here, from here to here. Outside the bluegrass box, I didn't have to. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. But let's just think of it. Let's just look at the chords. Just the chords. Don't try to play the melody. We'll just we'll start with this. When the old one is called up young. Okay. Which one? This one right here. So this one, the, the F sharp and the E flat. But it, but remember, this the, the notes don't matter. It's the position. Sixth fret when you're. I'm down here in the sixth. You need to yep. Six. That's where you're at. Six and two. That's it, right? Yep. Thank you. I got it. Okay. Yeah, I got so it. let's do it slow. When the roll one is called up young. Now we're going to go to five. 
on this and I can I take breaks sometimes just using the, the chords without I'll, I'll, I'll sort of keep the melody in my head I'll go play the melody sometimes he played part of it and he let your brain fill in the rest of it and if you're thinking of when the roll is called up yonder you don't have to you don't have to play all the notes I like to see I like to hear the melody going in the right direction but um, I don't have great hand speed and um, so I have to so I cheat this is my this is my method of cheating is to, is, is I'll just I'll skip some notes if I'm playing See, if, if I was playing a break on this, this is probably what I would play. Yeah, put the five chord. Yeah, they do because if you're like, we, we, I, I talked about this before you got here, but you can play the one, this this one right here, and you can just play four, one, five, and the other one. said this, but I do that a lot, lot if I'm in a big jam with 25 mandolin players, and everybody's just beating the hell out of it, and they don't need me to, to, to add to that, so I'll, I'll just play, play that. And sometimes I just like the sound of it, maybe, maybe when I'm doodling on my own. I, I doodle a lot, even in jam sessions, I'll just sit there, I'll just doodle while everybody else is playing. Maybe annoying to some people, but somebody, nobody's hit me yet, so <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I will just keep doing that. Um, but uh, knowing the chords and, and positions, and I didn't do that, but I think I might do this at some time. I can just cut this out, and I can move it anywhere. If I move this down to, say, if I wanted to play an F sharp, if I move this down to here, so right here at F sharp, I can move that same pattern. I can play when the roll is called up yonder right there. It stands, stands on its own. It sounds okay, um, especially for a jam session. You know, unless you're wanting to impress everybody, you know, and 
I, I, I quit doing that. I used to think about it, but I found out there's a whole lot more better mandolin players out there than me. And what I want to do is just it, is be able to take a break that people recognize as that song. That's and uh, and satisfy yourself. Don't don't play for other musicians. If you do that, you're going to be disappointed. You know, there's there's 50 mandolin players out here way better than me, and I'm not trying to impress them. Uh, there's um, and if you if you get thinking you're pretty good, you get some little 10 year old kid come up and slap you down. <laughs> uh, but one thing I don't, you know, I, I know pretty much how good I am. I don't have any illusions. You know, I, I, I work, work at it. This, this box here, if you, if you just take it and keep the melody in mind and find notes, <coughs> you're going to find most melodies of songs you play in this. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it. That it's there. Now, unless you get to, you know, <coughs> jazzy stuff or stuff with a lot of weird chords, I avoid those because, <laughs> you know, I, I might like them if I knew those chords, but I don't know the chords. So. Like I say, I'd love Chris Seeley if I could play like him, but since mm -hmm. I don't, I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he plays he plays stuff that doesn't sound like music to me, and that offends some of my friends that are big fans of him. But it doesn't. It's not. It's not what my interpretation of music is. Now he did a one. He did a CD of, of with Michael Daves. That's that was uh, all Carter family, or or not Carter. Or Stanley Brothers duets, and it's fabulous. It's amazing. I mean, he's still playing stuff that I can't play, but he plays stuff that I can recognize. Yeah, and uh, but and he's you know he is probably the best mandolin player in the world. I, I wouldn't doubt. I wouldn't have any problem with that. But I'm not going to go buy his CDs because uh, it's not what I want to hear. Uh, How do you apply minor? Okay, that's a whole that's a whole new. Uh, that's the advanced <laughs> class. Wait till I turn No, it's, it's not. <laughs> are the only minors we use in bluegrass are the two minors, two minor and the six. Mm -hmm. So if we're gonna find the find those on the on the mandolin, we gotta go. We got if we're going to B, we're gonna go B. The, it's the second note, so B is one, two, so it's C sharp. Magic, huh? And sometimes if there's that C-sharp minor and I'm playing a break that has that in it, I might just play that note. I might just end up at, at, the, at the beginning of that phrase. Now, with a C-sharp, if a C-sharp minor, there's always a fifth in a, in a, min in a minor chord. The, the third is flatted. So if I play the F-sharp along with it right there, that is a 1-5 in a C-sharp. That could either be a C-sharp major or minor because you're just playing the 1 and the 5. So you could play that as the... I'm just trying to think of a song that has... Got another one coming for you, Clyde. Braden. Uh, it's say if you're doing Foggy Mountain Breakdown in... in the, oh, that's, that's a 6 minor. I'm trying to think of a... A two minor. I don't do many songs with minors. Lonesome Pine has two and three. No, that's a six minor too. Lonesome Pine has two and three. That's a six minor too. Thank you. 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 know, I might make a comment. This, this is a pentatonic scale, and as long as you stay within this box, you will not play a wrong note yeah. against the one, four, five. They all fit. You yeah. can also play this pentatonic scale. And be soft when you do it against this two minor and six minor, and yeah. no one will notice the difference. You cannot play a wrong note if you stay there. And that's when he yes. played that little break while ago, this, this double stop, you notice he did a an intermediate walk up from one to the other, and that's a wonderful way to. It just adds, and it, it's a great for any vocalist. Yeah. <coughs> I just had to say so that. that's connecting things like you said you the walk-up bill and, yeah. and I know it's just a matter of ham hammering on walking yeah, up to I do a lot it, of hammer on you start playing tuning chords uh, and I'll, I'll hammer on this and play the bell stop so I have two more six minor you know I, I, the minor thing has got me stumped in that I, I can't think of a song that I do so very few songs with minors in it. Uh, 
Lonesome Moonlight Waltz. Yeah, but that's a, 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 that's a,
I learned on my own, and it, and that's why I really recommend having a teacher. If you can find one that you like to get along with, because learning on your own takes a long. It took me a lot longer to learn this stuff than had I had somebody to show me, and give me some ideas. Some people do it like this, they'll, they'll right. bar it. Uh -huh. And what I do is, is I, I had a hard time holding that down, so I push down with my middle finger on that one, and I, same if I play the A here. I'll pl I'll, I'll, I'll just push that finger down. It's another way to cheat. So you'd, you'd be kind of basically doing three, three, um, three note yeah. chords. Yeah, okay. I do lots of three note chords. Yeah. I, 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 I don't, as a matter of fact, I, I don't often play the four note big chords because I got this I got a finger little finger that is not the right shape anymore. And uh, so I have to I, I you have to compensate for what what you got. If you can't do it then do something else. Find find something that works. Three three note chords work great. I, I use them all the time. So, so if I'm playing in G, I'll use this G, this B, G, B. I'll use that all the time. And I don't I don't play this I don't play that note, I muff it. And I play the C, I, I don't play the I don't play the E even though it fits. I'll play and then G and come down here for the D. So G. And that's what I recommend for people that can't make this the, the, the Bill Monroe bluegrass G. That's a big reach for lots of people. It's a big reach for me because this little finger is uncooperative and remains so. So I, 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 I'll often use this G right here, just, just that. And, and uh, doesn't sound the same, doesn't quite have the snap that this one does. But, and, and I actually prefer, when I go down here, I can reach it okay. When I get to A, B flat, and B, I can reach it fine. So I'll, I will use it. With G, I often use this one just because I can't reach that, I can't reach that seventh fret very easily with my, with my crooked finger. Also, it adds variety. You get you get a big jam, and everybody's doing this. So if I do this. It's a different sound. It's a softer. Uh, now, do I like it as well as I like this? No, I like this is what I like. But it's not what you like that makes you fat. You know? That's what my dad used to say. I never did get it until I got older and fatter. <laughs> Oh, that's because you're playing one at a time. 
Play it as a unit. You're, that's not two separate notes. That's one thing. A double stop is one is one thing. It's not this. It's not this. It's this. Double stops are not two separate notes. They're one double stop. It's a mini chord. It's a it's a chord. If you play it up and down, you play all the way through. Drive through it. Drive through it. Don't stop. It's not that. It's this. You shouldn't hear a separation. It should sound like one. It's one thing. Unless you want it to be two things. You want to do that. But if you if you're trying to play it like drive drive through it. Um, you know, and, and, and get all the way through. Don't go through and just stop right there. Just I I sometimes tell people to take take a swing at it. And it, it, it take a swing at it all the time, but that's the feel you want. If I'm starting here, I want it to feel like I'm swinging from here. Okay, I, I if I'm playing that double stop, I want it to be like that. And, uh, and now if I, sometimes if I, I don't do good on tremolo. I don't have the hand speed. I can't, you know, I do as, I do as good as I can do. And, and sometimes it's kind of, sounds crappy. And uh, so I'll often not I'll often not tremolo where it's really called for because my tremolo sucks. So I don't I don't have good I don't have speed yeah. to do it. And and so if I'm playing a, a tune like I do Lonesome Moonlight Waltz. Now see that should all, all almost all be tremolo. But when I do it tremolo it sounds like crap. You know, I, I, I mean, I make accommodations for myself. I, now, I keep working at it. I still hope that someday I'll develop a nice, smooth, fast tremolo. It could happen. I, you know, I could win the lottery. You know, <laughs> I, I, it could happen. So I, I do practice tremolo, and that, that's been hard for me from the start. I could, you know, I, I, it's not a, I would recommend practicing it, and I'd like to tell you how to practice to get really good at it, but I haven't been successful yet, so I can't tell you. I How can't do you really practice? Well, people told me to, to start like that and just speed it up. It's just down, up, down, up, down, up, and just keep speeding it up. So. But don't try to speed it up too fast. Speed it up a little bit at a time. Well, I've never gotten past, I've never gotten to the too fast part. So, um, <laughs> and, and, I, and I... I also can't do the really fast triplets of these guys. That that stuff, I can't do it. I'd love to be able to do it. I, I love the sound of it, and I'd, I'd love to end my breaks with that really fast machine gun triplet. <laughs> but then I'd like to be rich and better looking too. So you do your trim tremolo with, with uh, elbow or wrist? I do it with my wrist. Some people do it with their elbow, uh, and I and I've heard I've seen really good players do both. I mean, they're not, I mean, not at the same time. Yeah. Sam Bush does it completely from his elbow. Uh, Mike Thompson does it just with his wrist. Yeah. And they both have killer tremolos. And I wouldn't want to argue with either one of them about which is right. Uh, it's, I watch these other, I'll, I watch the big guys play a lot. YouTube's a great resource. And they don't, any of them do the same, do things alike. None of them. And so that's why I really think that anybody that tells you there's only one way to do something, then you just need to walk out because they're lying. There's a million ways to skin this cat. And what I'm showing you here is just something that works for me. Um, and, and I think it's I think it's useful. I've been to so many workshops where the guy just sits up there and shows me how good he is. Yeah. You know, well, I already knew that. That's why I came to these workshops. So he hasn't taught me anything new at all. I already knew the guy was was really good. Yeah. <laughs> and anyhow, okay. Okay. So how your last two boxes? I can see they're chords. They are. You know what? If you can figure them out, great. Yeah, but, but I didn't know you had in, any. We're not going to go into that. Oh, okay. I, that's a different. That's a different work. That's my double stop workshop, and we'll do that. 
I'll do that in probably the next thing I go to. And and um, I have um, because that's between the bluegrass box and that double stop thing. But that we don't have time to do that now. Um, that's what I base my playing on, other than learning fiddle tunes. And that's what I'd recommend more than anything else. Learn fiddle tunes. Find people to play with, to play, learn to play in time, and pay attention to the chord progressions you're in. L l listen to when you're playing a fiddle tune. Notice when they when there's double stops involved and when there's what chords you're playing over. And that'll make your playing better than probably better than anything else you do. Is learn fiddle tunes and play them with other people and know what the chords are. Learn the chords. I played whiskey before breakfast for 10 years before I ever learned the chords to it because mm -hmm. I just I played in an Irish band and we played fiddle whiskey before breakfast for Irish dancers. So I never knew the chords, especially the B part where it changes chords about 55 times. Mm -hmm. And I, I never learned the chords to it because I didn't need to. And and that's a mistake. Learn the chord, learn to play the chords to all your fiddle tunes that you know. Um, I, I, I think that's that's important. That'll teach you more about what you're playing. You'll know when you're playing a certain pattern, number of notes over a chord, and when the chord changes, why does it change to a G there? Probably because it's going to hit a G note right on the beginning of that phrase. And and that helped me learn to improvise, learn how to play, um, play stuff that I had never heard before and come up with a melody, find the melody. Knowing that the when you're when the chords change, the next melody note is going to be in that chord. Those three notes, the, the arpeggio. If it's a G, it's going to be a G, B, or a D. So you got a one in three chance of hitting the right note. You know, it's a good good gamble. Boy, if you could have that kind of odds at Vegas, you'd be rich. <laughs> you get a one in three shot. So, and and also none of them are going to be wrong. One of them is going to be the melody note, but the other two are going to fit fine. They're harmony notes. So. So that's why you know you need to know your chord, what the chord positions are. Um, this is a great device for for finding them. I think it works. It it, it it works for me. I use it a lot. It's not all. It's not the only thing I use, but I, I do use it a lot. And uh, any on these on the two middle strings, anywhere you put that finger down, first finger, that's the key you're in. So you can cover everything. You really can. You can cover every every. It gets kind of a stretch when you went down when you get way down here to A, and you're down here. If I'm playing A, because I can play A here. I didn't I didn't cover the open string, but the open ones are basically the same except for this is up at the nut. nut. This this top line here is the, is is the open string, so it's the same below that. So if you're playing in D, you can play. Exact same thing by moving it up two frets. Same thing as A. What we're doing C sharp. E flat. So I can move that anywhere I, anywhere I want. See, you just have to practice it. You can just practice it in B. In the B. Practice the, the B is just. And, I just picked that. That's once you learn it. You the B is totally it. arbitrary. Oh, yeah. I just picked that because that's one that gives people fits often. B, B, and sometimes E and B flat and E flat. Yeah. And, and they're always right there. Yeah. You can you can play in any E flat. You know the main reason I did did this at first is because all the old country songs that I play I like to do in E flat fits my voice. <laughs> It'll make everybody hate you, <coughs> and especially bass players particularly hate you flat, unless it's Mickey. Mickey loves you flat. But uh, and then fiddle players, you need to play with the, with the Hoffits and Wells. They don't mind you flat. And uh, but so, but you know the old country songs are all slow, so it's not you know. And uh, but I figured out if I wanted to cut, kick off an old country song and. You know, Not hard to um, 
Well, there I added the I, I added the octave, which I don't do that often. I go from here to the octave. Yeah. That octave. That's a that's a pretty long that's a that's a long reach for me because this finger doesn't. My little finger is you know just a rebel. Because I mean, if you, if you take the first three strings or the, on the box there yeah. and add the pinky, you've got the scale. scale. You've got yeah, closed scale. exactly. That's that's a closed scale. And but I find that that to make all the notes always work, you need to leave those. You need to leave those last two out. Now you can add them when you need them for the melody. Sometimes they're yeah. there in the melody, and I do sometimes. But sometimes I just, you know, you don't have to play the exact melody. Play, play, uh, you know, imply notes. You know, if, if I'm playing Happy Birthday and I don't play all the notes, everybody hears all of Happy Birthday because mm -hmm. you've had it, had it in your head forever, and I, you don't have to play it. So, any other questions? I hope I gave you guys something you can use. Those mean nothing to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I already covered that. Those, those, what those are, the X's are the flat thirds. Oh, that's the nevels. Yeah, that's another lesson. That's, that's, that, that, that's you. Those, those are really useful, and you can figure them out on your own for eighths. But I'm not going to work. I'm not going to do that today. I'll do it at, a, at another workshop. Next year. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think I'm doing another workshop at <coughs> at High Valley. No, I'm not going to High Dry. It's There's too a hot. festival in Idaho. It's too hot. Oh, yeah, it's you're going over there. Out. I don't going know if that's Motella. No, it's so in, uh, in uh, Kingston. Outside of Kingston. Kingston yeah. yeah. Yeah, they have full hookups. Air conditioning. That's a nice know. spot. I like going there. Right. It's right on the river. It's uh, east right of right Coeur d'Alene. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And it's just a Pickers festival. It's not a not a big event. Fun spot. That's over there. When, when is it, Nikki? It's a. Uh, I just know when to get in the bus. Huh. It's a beautiful <laughs> area. Yeah. We get at the next one. Oh. No, it's a lot further than that. It's the last weekend in August. August. No, August. August. Yeah, we have a week off before we go. We have. It's on Facebook. Gone yeah. fishing yeah. Pickers Festival. Yeah, uh, gone fishing. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow. Oh, the twentieth. Year, I think, isn't it? It's August 20th. I don't think so. This is 22nd. 20th to the 22nd. Yeah, okay. But that narrows it down. So it's coming up really quick. Gone fishing festival. Yeah. It's a bit of a drive. It's a, it's a yeah. 400 mile drive to my house. I looked it up when you said, when I saw this on your Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, it said, do you do any other things for festivals? I Googled that festival and it looks really cool. Yeah. And it's the second year of it. Pretty little resort. Yeah, it's gorgeous country. It's my old stomping grounds. Okay, basically I'm done, folks, and thank you, and, and I hope thank you, you. I hope you've got you. something you can use. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's great. Really. Yeah. You know, uh, Fill out your emails. I, I, I heard it two weeks ago, but I needed the repetition, and thanks for the handout. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm not more organized for this. No, no, no. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. 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 You should so keep giving this on. until all the faces in the room is down. Until yeah. 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 all the lights are gone. I hope that got this handout. Well, I think I did too much in the, in the, in the um, oh. other workshops I've done. I think I tried to cover it. I tried to do this and the double stop thing. It's too much for one thing.
some that are better than others. And see, so what I've outlined here is the chords. The one chord, I've got about four there, and one chord here. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't treat you too good. Yeah. 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 